Well, this next uh, this next section in uh, in lesson in module four is about content types and site columns. And what I'd like to do is just uh, briefly describe these and give a demonstration for you. And then we'll get into lesson three and looking at where we are time-wise, and that might uh, be where we have to end up for the day. Uh, we'll play it by ear when we talk about managed metadata. But uh, so far in this conversation about content management, we've been talking about uh, managing content with regard to the containers, you know, namely the databases, a little bit about lists and libraries. We looked at the list view thresholds and a few other things that we could do there. This next lesson focuses in on site content types and site columns. And it's kind of an interesting conversation because when we ask about what is a content type, uh, we want to be very clear on what we're defining. The answer is a content type is a type of content. Okay, great. I needed a better definition than that, don't I? Well, think of a content type in this, in this manner. A content type is the schema for a record that we store. So as we look to the different kinds of information that we will have on our SharePoint site, uh, there would be things such as project documents. On this list, we will be storing calendar events. That is a, content, a type of content that we store. We also have a tasks list over here, which is another type of content that we store. So the content type focuses on the function or the purpose for the data that is generated. Okay. If you go back to documents, you look at these documents and you say, well, those are Word documents, those are text files, that's a PowerPoint slide deck, and that somewhat misses what content types are all about. It's not file types. It's about what it's used for. Is it a memo? Is it a budget sheet? Is it an employee performance review? And each one of those content types is used for a different purpose and will have different um, uses but also retention requirements around it. So by defining the different types of content we have, we can create rules for those different uh, content types. We can also set up metadata requirements. That is, I want to capture these extra fields in columns for just this content type. So what I'm going to do here is create a couple content types for you and show you how this would be done. And I'm going to navigate uh, here. I'm on the help desk. Now, if you recall, the help desk is a subsite of the IT site that, that we started out with. And if I want to create a content type, I'll navigate site actions to site settings. And notice under the galleries, I have this site content types gallery. Content types can be customized on a per site basis. However, as you look at this list of content types here, you'll see that the source of these content types is the parent site. So the higher up in my site collection that I define these, the more widely available they'll be. So if I want to create a content type that is available for all sites in my site collection, what I'll want to do is navigate to the top level site and create it in that content type gallery up above. Well, there's a couple of ways I can get there. I can certainly click on information technology in the top link bar. I can also click right here in the column and notice that I've gone from having the links here to the actual content types being the links where I can now edit them. Additionally, notice that my top link bar highlights the top level site. My breadcrumb trail in the ribbon also indicates that I'm back up at the IT site. And my URL also indicates that I've navigated back to the top level site. So now I'm looking at the content type gallery for the top level site. These will all be available down below. Now, as I roll through, we see that the content types are organized into different categories. And as I look at things like the calendar, the calendar, if I were to roll down here to list content types, I see that there is 
a list content type called event. If I were to click on event, notice these are the item, these are the fields that make up an event content type. I have to have a title, a location for the event, which is optional, but I will require a start time and an end time, because that's what an event is all about, whether it's a simple lunch appointment from noon to one, or whether it is a quarterly meeting from two to four, I need to specify at least those three fields. The location is a good idea to have, but it's optional. A description, I can categorize it as well. And then there are some special things around an event, uh, whether it's an all-day event, a recurrence, or whether it needs a workspace. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own content type in this demonstration. And I'm going to create this to reserve a company car. So I'm going to click on the Create button and create a company car reservation. Now, the description of this, this is kind of an interesting thing. <coughs> you would expect me to describe what this is about. But really, what I'm going to use this description for is to give the user a notice about the content type when they use it. So the, co the company car, what's something that you want to tell every user when they reserve a company car? Don't, don't return it empty. I want to give them a message. So please be sure to fill the vehicle up prior to <laughs> Don't be drunk. You know, Tony, I, I, there are some things we hope would go without saying, but you're right. In this day and age, <laughs> the less we assume, the safer we are. Thanks to lawyers, common sense is out the window because nobody is going to be held responsible for their lack of it. All right. All right. So the company car reservation. Now, a thing with content types is that a content type has to fit into this hierarchy where it inherits its initial uh, settings from the parent content type. So the parent content type in this case is it's a list content type. And I'm going to start off with a generic item. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in additional columns to this myself. Now, this custom content type, I can put it in an existing group. And it may make sense to put it in a list group. What I'm going to do whenever I create custom uh, content types is I create a new group for them. And I'm going to call it underscore class demo content types. Now, why the underscore? Exactly. I'll fold this to the top of the list. I'll click the OK button. So now, this title, because this content type is a child of the item content type, it will be required to have a title field. Right? And so that title uh, will be for the reservation. Now, what we'll need to do is we'll need to add in a few additional columns. When you reserve a car, what's the first thing you need to say? What's the, what else do we have to include in the car reservation? Vehicle. Which vehicle, exactly. Now, that information is going to be defined by the site columns. Now, just like we would have a gallery for content types, we have a gallery for site columns. In lists and libraries, we can add a custom column. But instead of having to go list by list and adding this column, I'm going to add it to the content type. And wherever the content type is used, this column will be presented as well. All right, Patrick's question, can you share content types across or between site collections? The answer is yes, you can. And that was the content type syndication hub feature that we saw at the site collection level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Add from New Site Column. And I'm going to create a new um, uh, column called Vehicle. And it's going to be a choice. All right. And it's going to be a choice column. And that will allow me to list the company vehicles available. 
Now, just like with content types, site columns can also be grouped. And I'm going to go with a new group called Class Demo Site Columns so we can find them faster. Notice the requirement is grayed out. I can't set that as required from here. After I add it to the content type, I can make it required. But right now, I'm creating a new site column, so this stays gray. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to number my cards. The 14 is the Camry. All right, the 20 is the Impala. And the, what else we got out there? The 29, I think, is the Fusion. All right? Any NASCAR junkies want to check me on that? <laughs> okay. Perhaps not. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the default value because, again, we want the user to choose the specific vehicle that they wish to reserve. Then I'll click the OK button. So now we've added the vehicle. All right. We also need to add a start date and an end date. Well, we have that from the existing event column. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two new site columns. All right. So I'll call it checkout and check in. So checkout time. And this is going to be a date and time field. As I scroll down, I'm going to put it in the existing group of, and there it is, my, my custom group. And for a vehicle reservation, I'm going to use the date and time format on account of if I only need it for a morning meeting from 8 to noon. I'll just set it up as a four-hour reservation. I'll leave the default value blank. And I'll click the OK button. So there's my checkout. I'm going to add a new site column for check-in. Date and time. And again, to put it in the existing group, date and time format, and click the OK button. There's probably one more thing that I need to add to this, and that is what? Yeah, the driver. All right. So we'll add from, uh, I can add from existing site columns. I'm going to add from a new site column again. And I'll specify the driver as a person or group. And I'll put that in the class demo site columns and allow selection of people only or people in groups. And we can show the field as name with presence. Now, I can, there's a number of different ways to show that name with picture. If I have pictures loaded in the user profiles, I can place that there so that you can see who still has the car keys and didn't turn them in. <laughs> if you're looking for somebody in particular. The name with presence gives you a little bubble so that if you have uh, Microsoft Link or, good o or formerly Office Communication Server, you can see if they're online. Then you can IM them. Say, hey, turn in the car. Click the OK button there, and we're good to go. Now, how we use this, we're going to add this to a custom list. All right. And a good question, it says, if I were to use the content type, can I take an optional column and make it required? And the answer is yes. You simply come in and edit the, the uh, column. And what I'll do is I will go ahead and make all of these required because it doesn't make sense to have any one of them empty, correct? So to make them required, I will click on each column and now say that the column is required. And I'll do that for each one of these. Now that I have this content type, which is pretty much defined for me, this is exactly what I want to see, I'm now going to set up a list to track all the company car reservations. Now, mind you, if we were to take this all the way out to its conclusion, 
I would want to set up some kind of logic that says if it's already reserved, then don't allow the reservation. But I'm not going to build it to that length. And there's just a lot of logic and a lot of other moving pieces. But just to demonstrate a content type for you, what we're going to do is under Site Actions, I'm going to click on More Options. And this will allow me to create a custom list called Car Res. That's horribly descriptive, but why did I choose this name here? URL. Exactly. I want to keep a short URL. So I'm going to click the Create button. And that's all there is to it. Next, I'm going to go to List Settings. And I'm going to fix that name to Company Car Reservations. And click the OK button. And it updates immediately. Now, I want to take that content type and apply it to this list so I can start creating reservations using that schema to capture those columns. Notice here, I don't have that many columns. So what I need to do is I need to add content types. To enable content type management on this list, I'll click on the Advanced Settings button link. And right here at the top, Allow Management of Content Types and choose Yes. Click the OK button. Now I have this section down below here for content types. Notice that a custom list starts out with the item content type being the one and only. What we're going to do is add from the existing site content types. And there is my class demo content types. And I'll select company car reservation to this list. Now because I'm not using this content type, I can click it and delete this content type. However, be very careful when you delete a content type. And here's why. The screen looks identical if I'm deleting it from the list or if I'm deleting it from the gallery. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to watch the breadcrumb trail up at the top here. If it says list settings, then I know I'm deleting it from the list or library settings. But if over here I see site settings, then I would be deleting it from the gallery. And I don't want to delete it from the gallery here. I just want to delete this content type from this list. And I'm allowed to do that because it's not in use yet. So now I have the one and only company car reservation. Now, all I did was create a custom list, added the content to, type to it. I haven't messed with columns at all, have I? So now, when I navigate back to the list and click on Add New Item, look at what it shows up. Because I defined a content type for car reservation. So title, trip to opening day at Tiger Stadium. Not trying to rub it in, Dave. <laughs> And we'll take the 29 card, and we'll check that out on the 5th at 8 AM. And we will return it maybe on the 5th. Well, who are we kidding? Monday. Monday, <laughs> Monday by 8 AM. So as, as a courtesy, we're letting people know. And the driver, uh, do I get K Harvick in my system? No. I'll have to go with uh, SP underscore admin. I know. Kind of a horribly boring name there. Click the Save button. And there it is. So a car is going out. I can click, read the details on that reservation. All right.